in the bin, racist family, in, in the, bin. the bin. Gosh, and exacerbate her feelings of inadequacy. Beautiful. Doesn't that sound like something Mark Darcy would say? No. <laughs> they give a urology. <laughs> As a eulogy, my love. <laughs> well, that's on for the bloopers. You're through to 1-800-DRAMA. The show where you show your biggest dilemmas. And we help you navigate them. I'm Sharba. And I'm Jamie. Come join us as we help people figure out if they are the drama. Because sometimes you just need an outside perspective. And we can all expand our own mindsets along the way. Wait, am I the drama? Okay, Sharba. Mm. Today's red flag, green flag. Give it to me. People who use text talk in real life. Like, verbally say it. Like, lol. Lol. OMG. Fmol. FML. <laughs> Ruffle. <laughs> not you tell me it's not fml. Fml. Why is it not R O F L, but it's L O L. Lol. L M A O instead of lmao. Well, Shaba, there's a clear reason why it's not lmao. Why can't it be lmao? You can make it lmao. But uh-huh. red flag, green flag. Lmao. All right, green flag. I I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. I find it funny when I mean I don't know if you are one of these people, but I, it's a red flag to me. It's not quite red. It's an amber flag to me if people red flag that because like it's language. People are having fun. It's art. We talk. It's art. The way that we speak is a reflection of our society. I do also think it's just a boomer thing though to what, say uh, lol. And to say, like... <laughs> I don't know if I say lol. LMAO. It's like one of those things where I'm now, like, overthinking it. No, I don't say lol, but you know what I do say? I use words like, oh, so spenny. Yeah. Oh, that gave me the ick. Delulu. Or... Delulu. It's <laughs> my favourite. <laughs> Jamie cannot stop saying Delulu. It is my favourite. It means delusional. Word. And it's so funny. Oh, and you did a new... <laughs> Menti B. Menti B. From a little Menti B. It just, it just takes the edge off describing a tough time, you yeah. know? Oh, cute little menti bee. Do you know, I think I'm going to beige flag it. Doesn't bother me, but I'm like, could have just said it. It's an expression of like an emotion. That's what I think. You could say delusional, but you say delulu. Yeah, but that's cute. <laughs> Lol is cringe. I'm beige flagging the cringe. But where's the line between... So you're saying delulu's not text talk? No. It's a shortening, not an acronym. So you're, you've got a particular issue with acronyms. Yeah, people verbally saying acronyms. Like, just say, oh my god. Instead of OMG. Yeah. But like, do you know what? I sometimes do it as well. I'm beige flagging <laughs> myself here, and I'm not judging. I think live and let live, you know? Oh, that's what a beige flag is, You babe. do your thing. I think. I don't know. That's what I'm <laughs> determining a beige flag is for today. Wonderful. <laughs> How's life for you right now, my love? It's fine, my love. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> The way that you said that, you yeah. sounded like one of those husbands on a ball and chain. Oh. It made me feel really sad. Really? Yeah. Oh, no, you're I'm like, sorry. It's fine, my love. <laughs> like, oh. Like, you were, there, was a, there was a slight tremble in your voice. Really? What have I done <laughs> to scare you It's so? not you, it's the cats. I think we need to shave a landing strip in Apollo. Because <laughs> he keeps leaving us little gifts of poo nuggets That's why all life around is not the house. For you. It's true. Yeah. He's an old man now. How he old is an he? old man. He's he's eleven in November. Bless him. And he just he does a little tud and then he leaves a little tud <laughs> out the tray. Everywhere. Ninety percent of the tuds nuggets. are in the tray. And then there's just like this little nugget about the size of anywhere from like a baked bean to a Maltese. Yeah. Just chilling on the stairs, <laughs> on the carpet. You're right. It's never in a consistent place. Yeah. It's, it's, there's one the other day that was like on the edge of one step, you know, like right <laughs> on the curve of the step. Like he must have balanced to deposit that. No, he doesn't deposit them. They just, I think they, they stick fall and off. then he runs and they fall off because he has the little poomies, doesn't he? He does. The zoomies. The zoomies that the happen poo after zoomies. the poo zoomies. Yeah. yeah. Because it makes cats all happy when they poop. Yeah. Yeah. Old to be a cat. Old to be a cat. <laughs> Old to just poop anywhere. Is that just what to, yeah, just to poop anywhere and someone picks it up. Mm. And you can make eye contact with people when you poop. I mean, taking a very different gear, my update today was going to be that I'm about to um, experience my Saturn return. And I'm slightly intimidated, I'm not going to lie. Oh, you're talking about like an early midlife crisis and I'm talking about cat poop. <laughs> Great. The different vibes. Very the different vibes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you are, aren't you? Yeah. You experienced yours already. And Apparently so. I've, I learned what Saturn Return was after you I had, had yours. Mine. And I was like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. 
But now, I guess mine is... What did like... you call it? You forgot the word for astrology, didn't you? Oh, horoscopy. Horoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it should be a term. No, it sounds painful. Aurol- it sounds like a torture. Y- what's a urology? Why does that come into my brain? Urology is like that is like a, a pee-pee stuff, like whittle. Oh. Why did I say whittle? I've not said that in so long. What's the thing that people say when someone's died? Huh? Clairvoyant? <laughs> I thought they give a urology. <laughs> that's a eulogy, my love. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one for the bloopers. <laughs> oh, oh well. Grandma Betty, and here is her granddaughter to give a urology. She had many kidney stones. <laughs> it's, look, look, nobody said that ADHD was fun all the time, okay? Sometimes the brain just goes a little bit to Lulu. Who said it's not fun? That's brilliant. I love all right. you. Before I lose every inch of my dignity... Are you ready to go fishing for a holes? Oh, oh I said it. you snuck it in. <laughs> Let's I'll go let you fishing. have that one. For a holes, butt holes. My left nostril is the tiniest bit runny. Do you ever get it where you just don't get where it comes? Do you from. get when you're totally fine and then it's just like water comes out your nostril? That's literally what's happening right now. Like I'm all like, the way down. Why? No, it suddenly hit my top lip before I've even known what's happening before. <laughs> Fortunately, I have a mustache, so it slows the flow. Oh, drama. Am I the drama for mm-hmm. insisting that my wife sees a therapist before she's alone with the kids? Ooh, oh. This sounds ominous. It does. If I'm like insisting to see a therapist, I don't need the second bit to feel some kind of way about that, but I need to know the context. Oh, well. OP, this 30 year old man, and his wife, 26 year old woman, gave birth to twins in October. <gasps> twins. One boy. One girl. Do you know, I was already saying, this feels a little bit like horror movie plot. Like, <gasps> the the therapist, Shining. And now there's like <laughs> twins. I was like, oh, okay. Let's read on. Our son had lung issues at birth, which is relevant to this. Oh. Okay. I-, I hope he's okay. Basically, two weeks ago, my son had his first breath holding spell. Oh, no. Do you know what these are? Oh, yeah. This is when babies stop breathing. They, yes. they just kind of go. <gasps> yes. Yeah. And, and then. I no. have heard so many parents account this. I went into like a YouTube wormhole. Yeah. And it sounds so terrifying. I saw a video of a baby doing that and no. like the grandma was holding him and was just like, breathe. Oh breathe. He did. He was fine, obviously. Yeah. But Wow. Like, yeah. Okay. For those who are fortunate enough not to know what they are, says OP, they are when a baby holds their breath out of fear or pain or shock. Oh. They can hold their breath until they turn blue or pass out but it's relatively normal. I, it sounds terrifying. I'm not trying to make light of how scary it must be mm-hmm. like as a parent to see that, but my brain did kind of go fainting goat. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like the human equivalent just like, when goats just go over. and then fall over. The baby just goes... <gasps> Yes. But scary version. Absolutely. And I think whilst it's yeah. relatively normal, there's a difference between normal and common. It's not very common. Yeah. But it's normal. Yeah. And I guess it's probably not very normal for it to happen a lot. Yes. And it's also like, it doesn't make it any less scary just because something's common. Like going under anesthetic can be quite common, but that's still a very terrifying thing to do, you mm. know? So, ooh, ooh, feeling for mum and dad, mm. feeling for everyone. Okay. As it turns out, says dad, my wife did not know what a breath holding spell was, which makes sense. Our kids are the first babies she's ever had to look after before. Mm-hmm. Kind of sounds like maybe dad has more experience, experience with babies. So, yeah. Okay. She has no younger siblings and is the youngest on both sides of her family. Maybe he has younger siblings and cousins and stuff. And has experienced it with family. I, I have to say, like, I've got one, two, three, four, five younger five. siblings. Yeah. And I've never experienced that myself, even though I've been around a lot of babies. Yeah. And you were, the youngest you were around a baby was seven. Yeah. So, like, you, you, it's within your memory time of life. How interesting. That's a very weird way to describe how that means. <laughs> Opie says, when the breath holding spell occurred, my wife was distraught. Mm. She didn't know what to do and started having a panic attack herself. Oh, oh dear. Bless mom. She managed to get hold of her father. I was working at the time and he came over and watched the kids while she got herself together. They then went to the ER and I met them there. My father-in-law knew what was going on, but my wife insisted on going to the ER because of our son's lung issue. Thankfully, the little rascal is fine. I am so glad. I'm glad Can we just touch some wood? Why is my head the first... 
touch it together. There you go. There you go. Just to make sure that <laughs> sun continues to be fine. But I have to say, even hearing it's common, if I was the wife, I too would be wanting to take my son to see someone. Yeah. Especially with a lung issue. Isn't um, first time new parent, it's a really common thing for you to have anxiety over their health. Like there's a, there's a limit of where it can get very extreme but there is that kind of point where like okay maybe you're being very overcautious but this is often what new parents do yeah should we read on yes thankfully the little rascal is fine says dad however my wife is not oh. her anxiety has gotten a million times worse and since that incident she hasn't been alone with the kids Whilst I'm working, she usually spends the day with her parents and then I pick her up after work. Her parents are fine with this because they adore her and the kids, but I'm concerned that she's no longer trusting herself as a mother. Oh, this Bless. is going down a very different path yeah, to the title. definitely right. not a horror plot. Yeah, this is not what I expected. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, she's told me that she wants to start being by herself during the day again with the kids, but I think that she should have at least one therapy appointment beforehand. Hmm. Oh, okay. That went the way I was expecting it to. <laughs> Her insomnia has gotten extremely bad since the incident and she can't be away from the kids without having another panic attack. Oh, so she can't be away from the kids. Mm. Okay. I'm worried about how she'll manage alone, but she thinks that I'm the drama for suggesting that she can't care for her own kids. Mm. So am I the drama? Oh, um, wow. What's your wow? Unpack your wow for me. Unpack my... That sounds so naughty. Show me your wow. Later. <laughs> My wow is I don't really know where I sit because I can kind of see both sides. I can see why if she's suffering from a lot of anxiety and mm -hmm. panic attacks and struggling with trusting herself, that objectively it sounds like therapy probably isn't a bad idea for her or at least speaking to somebody mm -hmm. and opening up about how she's doing. But at the same time, I can see from her perspective if she feels like she's working through it herself mm. which which is actually some people can and that's perfectly valid yeah. not everybody needs therapy not everybody wants therapy to be questioned on your ability to look after your children especially because it was her choice to go to her parents with them for a bit and now she wants to go back to caring for them herself mm -hmm. that's where i'm a little bit stuck because i can i can kind of read it and be like maybe therapy is a good idea but also I would maybe be offended too if somebody insisted I have therapy and did it as a condition before they thought I was fit to look after the kids on their own. That's interesting. Sorry, that was yes. very long. No, no, it wasn't. And I, I, I see where you're coming from, but I feel less stuck. Okay. I feel quite certain in my conviction. I'm ready for my badge. Can I give my badge? Mm -hmm. You're the drama. I, th I think the dad's uh, drama in this okay. situation. The reason being is because... I guess we all see things from our own lenses, right? I can totally see why you would want to be there for your family and you are doing this with good intentions. I totally see that. Hell is paid for good intentions, but I see your good intentions. Mm. My issue is, especially for saying that you're concerned that she doesn't trust herself as a mother, what you need to be doing is giving, like, tr you need to be trusting Boosting her, her. Giving yeah. her the confidence to feel like she can do things. And I don't think... That being like, mm, you need to speak to a certified professional before you're allowed to spend time with your children alone. It just doesn't fly with me. You're co-parenting. Yeah. And I think what you can say is, I, I think a conversation of, hey, are you going to be okay? Shall we talk through some potential scenarios? So if this happens, how would you feel? Yeah. Like, do you feel like this is something that you can take on? But I kind of feel like in these situations, unless she's done something really pertinent that's made you think no mm. i really don't think that you are capable and you're too in your own feelings to see this for the like rational objectivity that it is yeah um i just feel that this is a bit unwarranted and is maybe overstepping like stay in your lane comes to mind yeah the the there's always a discomfort with the language of like insisting my wife sees a therapist i i completely agree with what you're saying I think I would give it a you're the drama badge, but it is with the caveat of I can see that he also, as the new parent, will oh, be having those... those worries as well. That's interesting. And I didn't so, think like, of that, but you are. Whilst... Right. It doesn't change my badge. No, no, yeah, and I, I agree, but I, <sighs> I can see where in good faith the kind that kind of thought would cross his mind, but I also completely agree with you that maybe there needs to be less focus on you must have therapy before I trust you to do this mm -hmm. because that's a very loaded statement. Yeah. And instead it should be, 
how can we both work this through together as a couple and as a family so that we're both feeling confident with how we're raising our kids and to make sure that you feel comfortable and confident with raising them and being on your own with them you are so right that's maybe an approach i would take and i think that's a really important point to untangle i don't think that the husband is wrong like op here is wrong for wanting to make sure that his wife's mental health is protected by Mm -hmm. not being in a situation that's going to make her feel um in any way worried or further yeah. further anxious or for worrying about his kids I, I don't think either of those is wrong yeah i think the approach of being like but you need to speak to a therapist that's where it's wrong and the reason being is because this like when we were reading this out it kind of made me think back do you mind if i share <laughs> air a little bit of our slightly dirty laundry no um my uh, i <laughs> <laughs> I've had a plenty of menti B in my day. <laughs> I think everybody could probably uh. say that they have. Um, and I think you, Jamie, as a person, you respond really well to therapy. You're mm. definitely like, you know what? I really appreciate having someone objective to talk things yeah. through with and talk things through with again and again and again. Like that's the way that yeah. you process things. I have realized though that I don't need like ongoing, like weekly or fortnightly therapy. I kind of need a set amount of sessions when something happens. Fair enough. But yes, I do find it very useful. I feel like I'm one step further removed than that. And there have been times where you're like, Shaba, I really think a therapist would help you. And I'm like, with respect, Jamie, please go away, oh, go away. Yeah. <laughs> i love you i haven't insisted <laughs> no it's just it's been a just, recommendation yeah and like it's something that I, I therapy has absolutely helped me so many times it's been mm. life-changing in many ways but when i was ready to do it yeah. the times where i was going to therapy because somebody else told me that i should i've never found it useful and actually it stressed me out more it's a very individual choice you know yeah and it, it's learning it takes time for like you need to experience that to be able to learn it yourself so that's why i think his approach is not his to say yeah but to check that she's okay is absolutely within his yeah. remit of being a supportive partner i've also had some other thoughts mm-hmm. thank you for sharing <laughs> i love you um i love you too <clears throat> i feel like yeah but I, there's nothing in here i feel like if something really bad had happened to make him lose trust in her he would have said it Mm -hmm. there's nothing here that i'm reading that makes me feel like she's incompetent incapable a danger to the children or anything like that Mm -hmm. what i'm reading here is an event happened that caused her panic and stress she needed some more support for childcare after in the immediate time after she now feels like she's able to go back to caring for them on her own and he's just stepped in and gone i don't think you are like how is somebody who's built themselves back up to get to that point of feeling confident enough not when she did anything wrong Mm -hmm. she chose to of her own accord get some more support Mm -hmm. not because she was a danger to her children but because she just felt like she wanted it in that time and he has gone oh i know you feel like you're back here ready to like look after the kids but i don't yeah you need to have therapy before that happens that is just going to destroy somebody's self-confidence and maybe you really do think maybe there's something else going on, but there there could have been a better conversation and a better way to go about it. I agree. Um, I also think it's quite like pertinent as well when somebody chooses to do things by themselves as opposed to somebody telling you that. Like mm. sh- the post says, she has told me that she wanted to start being by herself during the day again with the kids. Like, yeah. I think if someone is actively choosing to take those steps, it means that they recognize that there's an issue and they're already self-prescribing ways to improve yeah that alone to me shows the sign of someone who like understands and is capable of making the move to try in the Mm. way that they are suggesting it would be different if someone else was just like i think you should now try being by yourself or circumstances came up with that she was going to be by herself and then you were like hang on a second this is the first time you're going to be by yourself i just want to make sure that you talk things through yeah but because her own but because she's decided to do that Mm. that's you know i don't know honestly i'm i'm quite an anxious person Mm -hmm. and i worry very much about like the health and safety of my loved ones i could absolutely see me having a similar incident like our our child having like what feels like a medical emergency getting very panicky about it and then wanting some support for a bit having a bit of anxiety over that and a low-key like ptsd yeah over that experience of like 
I felt like I was going to lose my child because that's probably what it felt like to her. And that's what would have caused the panic attack and the ongoing anxiety. And like, I, I feel like it's been very much built up in the husband's head. Yeah. Like, I think this kind of response is not, you're not safe to be around the kids. I, I think that, it's actually, it, doesn't... it has the opposite effect of what maybe he's wanting. I think this is going to make her question herself more <laughs> to mm. be like, I don't think you're a capable parent go speak to someone Mm. um which i don't think is a great thing to do none of this is to say though that it's never that it's always inappropriate to suggest therapy no it's like and there is a difference between insisting and putting in therapy as a do this or you can't do that Mm -hmm. therapy can be a very warranted suggestion in quite a few cases and i'm not saying it is absolutely not warranted here to suggest it in some way but clearly the way that it's gone about is not great. But don't you think, like, sometimes that's all you need to do, to be like, hey, this is an option for you, just letting you know in mm. case you haven't considered. And if someone else is like, you know what, I don't want to, then fine. Yeah. yeah. Unless you really think they're going to be a danger to themselves or others. There is a difference like, as well. genuinely. Like, I don't think wife in this situation has gone, no, I don't want to. And he's gone, no, you absolutely must. Mm. I-, I don't know. I don't know if he said it once. Yeah, it's difficult. Um, and I don't know because she says I'm worried about how she'll manage alone, but she thinks I'm the drama for suggesting that she can't care for her own kids. I think it's okay to suggest, as you said, but the tone, like there's so much of that context that comes up and that's kind of what I was trying to say about the fact that she has made that decision herself. Mm. She's already self-monitoring. Mm. She's already showing a desire to grow by herself I feel like somebody who's clued up in that way would also, you know, like not need to be insisted to go to therapy. And she was already aware enough to know when she wasn't able to cope. Yes. Yes. One final point that I really wanted to bring up Mm -hmm. about this. I also think that it's kind of, I don't want to say dangerous, but not okay. And maybe something that the dad needs to like challenge within himself to think that parents aren't able to be good parents if they have mental health issues. Yeah. There are absolutely times where some mental health issues, things like addiction, things like severe depression can affect your ability to parent. But are you telling me that in the world there are people with insomnia and all of them are bad parents because of their insomnia? And the same with anxiety. You know, like, I think the mark of being a good parent isn't to not have any mental health issues at all because... (laughs) Who in this world can, you yeah. know, truthfully <laughs> and authentically and genuinely say that? I think it's being able to prioritize and realize that your kids come first in certain situations. Mm-hmm. So if you're able to do that, then you're a good, you're able to be a good parent. Um, so yeah, like, I, I think I, I struggle a little bit because when you're like, oh, you have to have at least one therapy appointment, like, what's that going to do? Uh, yeah, and the, the one therapy appointment, that feels more like... He's like, mm, I need to get to her signed off me. by a professional. Yeah. Right? Like, as opposed to... It feels a bit weird. Yeah. Should we see what other people have to say? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> so one commenter says, My God, without being checked by a doctor, there's absolutely no way of telling of this incident, assuming it's a first-time incident with this baby, was a breath spell or something more serious. Agreed. Honestly, yeah, your wife should go to therapy, but you're also being an asshole by belittling her very real and valid anxiety about her baby not breathing. We didn't even touch upon that. Uh, about whether she yeah. should... I did kind of... Meant, I, I, I just said I would do the same. Oh, yeah. I Yeah. If it was the first time it happened to... Didn't feel like an My child. Yeah. Especially, especially a child with a lung issue. Yes. With a known breathing because problem. Because you don't know... If you're not an expert, a, a, a breath stopping... What's it called? A breath spell could impact a child with certain breathing conditions absolutely like, i would, I would go that. as far as saying that you would be a bad parent for not checking knowing that your child has a lung yeah, issue to at least get a doctor to say this happens occasionally with some kids and it's fine even with his lung condition he's yeah. fine yeah 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 i i think that honestly yeah your wife should go to therapy it's tricky maybe she should maybe she shouldn't it really depends on whether she's ready whether it's going to help also whether, whether it's accessible i think yeah. every, like in that vein everyone should go to bloody therapy yeah every person <laughs> in the world should go to therapy but to make it conditional on being able to look after your kids that's where it's a big no-no for me mm. somebody else says not the drama she's mm. a first-time mom with a child with health issues it's normal to be nervous while her reaction was extreme and i agree she would benefit from taking talking to someone about it if this is a one-time thing let her try to work it out mm. okay Oh, and that commenter said, I was going to say no drama here until you said that she thinks you're an arsehole for suggesting it. Okay, so it sounds like that person was just like, I didn't think anyone was an issue, 
But now this commenter is kind of judging the mum for calling dad an ass, uh, uh, an asshole. Yeah. I feel like you'd call me an asshole <laughs> if I did that. I think sometimes what's said and what's heard are two different things. Mm. So dad might have said to mum, hey, um, I think you should see a th- therapist just to make sure that you're okay and suitable. And what mum's hearing is, you think I'm a bad parent. Mm. And that can elicit a different response. Yeah, It's maybe not the healthiest of communication, but I don't think that she's like the drama for saying that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why that <laughs> changed someone's opinion to... Oh, she called you an asshole for offending her. Oh, she's now, she's now the drama. <laughs> oh, you are the drama. Mm. You're completely undermining her as a parent, which will only exacerbate her feelings of inadequacy. Yeah, that's yes. what we were saying. Gosh, and exacerbate her feelings of inadequacy. Beautiful. Doesn't that sound like something Mark Darcy would say? No. <laughs> <laughs> she did what she needed to do when she was in a crisis. Now she's feeling better. Who are you to say that she can't be alone with her own kids? Yeah. I agree with this one. Yeah, I do. Am I the drama for deciding not to buy food for my fiancé's family anymore? Oh. <laughs> this sounds spicy. Is this spicy food? I need to know. Give me the deets. Every other week, my fiancé, 22-year-old woman, and I, a 23-year-old man, go out to eat with her family. And last week, we went to a Korean barbecue restaurant oh. owned by my uncle, 59, oh. where I paid for everyone's meal. It's okay, can generous. I just say? <laughs> I... <laughs> you, I know, you got excited <laughs> over Korean barbecue. I was so excited to try Korean barbecue. And then Jamie and I went on a Virgin Voyages cruise. Yeah. And we went to Gombe, which is this Korean barbecue restaurant on a cruise ship. And you think, like, really? A cruise ship? I tell you guys, this is next level. This is absolutely next level. And that restaurant was amazing. And it's like a core memory that lives in the happy, joyful part of my brain. That's adorable. Because- (laughs) It's joy. (laughs) Because you loved it so much. Jamie, the person who's like, like when I first met you 10 years ago, you only went to one- you met me 13 years ago. Sorry. Sure, Nearly. then you do you remember when we first met you only went sure. to one pizza hut restaurant yeah. that's the only time you would eat out to one very specific pizza hut. yeah not, not only... pizza hut anywhere that one in one specific town yeah and i would only eat the margarita pizza it 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 blows my mind and now you're like living it up playing little drinking games eating like i had cranberry juice <laughs> but yeah but you were participating with strangers yes as we were eating Korean food, and you're like, what's gochujang? Oh, I like gochujang. And I was like, this is incredible. And I just, it, yeah. So there is a special place in my heart for, for a Korean barbecue for more than just the food. Do you know, there's a special place in my heart for cranberry juice. Even thinking about it, I feel thirsty. It's so like... <laughs> It's sucking wet, of moisture. But dry it's at disgusting. The same time. I love it. I hate it. It's amazing. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna read on. <laughs> so OP paid for everyone's meal. Very generous. Very generous. I only asked them to cover the tip for the waitress, which they agreed to do so. Mm-hmm. The bill was over two hundred and forty dollars, and I paid. Usually, when I, I think OP paid for the meal. Usually, when I cover the tab for my friends or significant other, they generous they generously tip, since they're only responsible for the gratuity, not the cost of the meal itself. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm, maybe there's a different tipping I mean, culture in America. In the, to there the definitely UK. is. There yeah. absolutely is. But like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't personally tip more than I usually do because, because someone, someone else, else, has paid. else has paid. I'm with you on that. That's if I normally leave a twenty percent tip, I'm gonna leave a twenty percent tip. Uh, well, my tip will depend on if you've uh, like. If I've had a good service, if someone's been really rude in the states, I will still tip because I understand that's what you need to do. Yeah. In the UK, I wouldn't tip because in the UK it's not normal to tip. Yes, but because like, in the UK, uh, waiting staff are paid a wage, yes. like a fair wage. Yes, it's not like, normal to tip. That it's in they're above minimum. I mean, by rest- fair. to to tip waiting staff in the UK, but I think it's it's not normal, but it's very common. Yeah. Because I like I, I mostly do tip whenever we go to restaurants yeah. when people are being nice. But if someone's being rude, I'm like, no, I'm not going to give you a tip. But in the States, I would still... We still do it, yeah. But less. So, But, <laughs> I, would, but I would never tip over generously just because someone else has paid. Yeah. yeah, I would tip over generously if somebody's been a particularly wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. However, a few days ago, my cousin, 21-year-old man, revealed that they had only left a one dollar tip <gasps> one dollar and they have tipped only one dollars before oh no one dollar i don't care who's paid for the rest of the meal but a one dollar tip is almost insulting that's no, like, just i just don't, don't leave a tip <laughs> that's horrific that's not great what? 
I was shocked and disappointed because a one dollar tip is insultingly low. So it's, isn't it yeah. supposed to be twenty percent? Yeah, in, so in that the should have been forty eight dollars. Wow. Bloody hell. Especially considering I had treated them to alcohol and dessert. So I discussed this issue with my fiance. Okay, I, have... I, don't, I just want to say, mm. why should alcohol and dessert have anything to do with it? Well, or is it just because it's more expensive? I it is more expensive, which I guess would lift the price of the meal up which would then lift the price of the tip up because sure. the meal is more expensive okay what i'm confused about is one dollar as a tip in the states with the state's mentality of like tipping culture that's really that rude. should be called out regardless of who paid for the meal yeah. like op seems to only be upset because they paid do you think they paid i think they paid <laughs> i think they paid can i so, say something else yes. i don't know if this is like to do with it do you not i guess it depends on like how big the family is but you're saying you and your fiance go out to eat with her family so it's like there's gonna be at least two people there but then mm. they're also talking about a cousin do you not think that 240 dollars is quite low um, for a meal with like a big family i guess if it like sometimes you can get like set meals so like it could have been like 24 dollars a person and then that's 10 people I'm just saying, yeah. But like $50 per person, that's roughly five people. So there could have been the fiancé, the, the couple, yeah. the parents, or a parent, a sibling and a cousin You're kind right, of vibe. Right. You if know? there's five people, fair. It's just because I was just going, I just went out for a meal with my family. Yeah. And like my sister was really shocked at the price. And I yeah. was like, if you think about it, because of the level of people that we are, mm. the reason it was multiple hundreds is because like when we broke it down, it was actually ended up being like 30 pound per person, or like 30 yeah. pound per person. And it wasn't like a high chain restaurant. It's just, you know, cost of living, things are going up. So I'm looking at 240. I'm like, wow, that seems quite cheap. But then in my mind, that's a big family. Yeah, it could also, option. sometimes Korean barbecue is very much sharing. Oh yeah, that too. So it yeah, could yeah, be yeah. the style of the restaurant. Sorry, that was such a digression. Mm. Please do continue. So, Continuing on, uh, so I discussed the issue with my fiance, but her family insists they never tip or only pays like one dollar for tip at restaurants as general services. This is happening in the USA. That's... I do think that is an important point because in the yeah. UK, if you found out someone was doing that, it'd be like, okay, okay, so they just clearly like, didn't enjoy it. It's or not, they don't yeah, like tipping. But in the states, the culture is very much when you go out to eat, you add tipping into your meal budget because yeah. that's how the staff make their money, right? Can I just say? Yeah. I'm really enjoying doing the podcast with you. Oh, I love doing it with you too. Thanks. It's just, I don't know. I just love exploring these things with you. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll go into deep sea diving next. <laughs> Carry on. Okay. <laughs> to explore if you get it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> As a result, I informed my fiance our bi-weekly restaurant outings would have to change. Whoa. I <laughs> sorry, it's <this is> very <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> I also You won't go to Jag no more. <laughs> I also have informed my fiance about this. I told her that I'd only paid for their meals as a kind gesture, while my fiance was annoyed she ultimately understood. I don't I mean, you can be annoyed at their like lack of tipping. But I, this feels like a very extreme reaction to me so far. I don't know. I think this is a fair reaction. Okay. The reason being is because it's his uncle's restaurant. So, like, all this time, oh, they've been going out, and he's like, fine. But now he's like, oh, geez, I'm being so disrespectful, and people know that I'm the one that's part of this family that's being really disrespectful right. that changes things to me you should still be tipping regardless right but like i can understand that extra annoyance because there's like the sense of accountability when our other people that you know are going to be judging you because people are tipping low and you didn't know about it mm. but they're not judging you because you didn't know about i it, get but... it with like the uncle's restaurant but I, yeah okay i'm gonna marinate my thoughts yeah opie <laughs> continues <laughs> Yesterday, they asked if I would buy their food again next week, to which I responded that they'll need to cover their own expenses for their meal. So clearly something right. happened, right? Because it's not normal for them to be like, are you going to buy our food again at the restaurant next time? Yeah. So maybe the fiancé said something. Maybe. I didn't want to confront them about their habit of tipping only a dollar, so I decided to handle it differently this time and simply pretend to cover the tip for them. What? And simply pretend to cover the tip for them no, I, don't, I, I heard you i just don't know what it means well let's read on and see okay. if it's explained her family did not take that so well they accused me of being ungrateful arguing that they were the ones taking time to meet up with me bi-weekly what? and that asking them to tip was unreasonable in the beginning what they also suggested that since my family is wealthy it's only fair that i continue paying for their meals okay 
that like the family suddenly became drama big drama no. i'm still confused as what what, what does op mean and when simply, it says i didn't want to confront them maybe so maybe that... op means that they covered the tip for them that they paid it for them instead that's what I'm taking from that. Because you can't pretend to cover the tip. But they're saying that I didn't want to confront them, but I said that you'll need to cover your own expense. I'm confused. Oh, so, so he was like, no, you guys pay for your own food. Yeah. But I'm going to tip. Ah, uh, yeah, I think that's what happened. They paid for their own food. OP paid for their own food and then did the tip and added on the tip for the whole meal, not just their half of the meal or their po- right. portion of the meal. okay, that makes That's sense. That's what I'm getting. Okay. okay, right, the end bit. My fiancé was surprisingly on my side. She knew her family had this issue. She just didn't have courage to inform them about it. Ooh. Am I the drama for deciding not to buy food for my fiancé's family anymore? Mm. I've gone on a little bit of a roller coaster with this one. I think, overall, I'm ready for a badge. Oh, give me a badge. I... Oh, yeah, I think I'm ready for my badge. Not the drama. Yeah, I agree. Not, not the, the drama. drama. Because I think there was a little bit in the beginning where it felt a bit dramatic. Because I was like, oh, just go out to dinner. They need to live their life how they live their life. You pay for what you want to pay for when you want to pay for it. And you can leave a bigger tip if you want to. But you can't force other people to pay. Mm-hmm. But it does sound like there's maybe a bit of a An ongoing thing. Yeah, a little bit of a kind of... Uh, we're owed something by you because your family's wealthy from the fiancé's parents. Oh, that really bugs me when that people say things really like that, you know? That bugs me. And I'm like, you... They just sound really stingy. Expecting their kid's fiancé to pay for them, for their food, and then not tipping when that's all they would need to pay for a meal. And I could never, I'm just saying, I could never imagine my parents on a bi-weekly basis asking you to pay for their meal. I couldn't imagine your family asking me to pay for their meal on a bi-weekly basis. Mm-hmm. It's just so bizarre a concept to me. I can't, I can't, I can't fathom it. It's, the, it's what you offer. It's the entitlement. You don't ask for it. Yeah. I, hey, will you be paying my meal this time? It was that flip when I was like, because I thought that it was a gift from the from OP in the beginning. Mm. And now it feels like something that the, the, uh, that the fiancé's family expect on a regular basis. Do you know, the only time where I would understand it, I think, from the family is if they were under the impression that because it was the uncle's restaurant, the OP meant they meant that OP wasn't actually paying. If the meal was comped or whatever, then uh, they were like, fine. You know, yeah. like, I expect it because you have these special ties, which means that essentially you're not paying anything. But yeah. knowing that actually full payment is there. And, and then to be like, you're ungrateful and it's a privilege to meet with us. Yeah, that's so bizarre. <laughs> that is no. so bizarre. Like... Accuse me of being ungrateful, arguing they were the ones t- taking time to meet. You're you're meeting with your kid as well, like your 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 child, and asking them to tip was unreasonable in the beginning. What? Like it's just it's part... unreasonable to on that basis. It's unreasonable to allow one person to pay for an entire family's meal. Yeah let alone on an ongoing basis. That just feels very weird I was feeling like OP was sounding a little bit whiny in the beginning. I paid, I paid, but I get it now. But I do get it, and I'm on OP's side with this one. Because as well, knowing the tipping culture in the States, tipping a dollar, especially on a $240 bill, is insulting. That is really insulting. Also, I'm kind of surprised at the fiancé's... at the surprise that the fiancé agreed. Because, like... She's your fiance. Sorry if you hurt my tummy. <laughs> I did. Are you hungry for Korean barbecue? Is that what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Do you know what I mean? Like, you should be on the same values. I'm really glad that she's agreeing sharing and, that and, with and you. sharing that opinion. Yeah. Um, it's sometimes a very scary thing to, you know, go against your family, even mm. on something that may seem as trivial as this. But, but it's glad. not trivial. It seems, oh, it's trivial because it's their tipping attitude. But actually, it's their whole attitude with money. Yeah. I have a question. And mm. I don't know if I'm, like, out of line asking this question. <laughs> yeah I'm, okay Drum i'm just roll. gonna ask it do you th- this may be like just me with my poc lens on do you think that wait the <laughs> op is korean i'm assuming I'm... there's a korean barbecue restaurant owned by their uncle. uncle do you think that the fiance's family are white or oh. a different culture to op oh i don't know that's and I don't know mentioned. if that should play a part, but in my brain, it is. And I, I don't know if that's fair. Call mm. me out on it if you need to. 
I just think that saying things like, you know, oh, it's it's wealthy, ungrateful. I don't know. Mm. Some something's setting off my little. People have like a gay dar, right? There's an LGBT dar. Yeah. I've got a bit of a POC dar. Oh. And I'm getting some vibes that here that sense. make me feel <laughs> not so fantastic. Yeah. I can't quite place my finger on it though. It's. I, but that didn't I, come across to you I at all. personally didn't pick up on that. Interesting. Um, so I'm very thank you for sharing your no, perspective. No, no, no. I, I might be totally wrong. No, no. I'm. I think it's a very interesting point to bring up. We just we don't have any way of knowing unless OP were to give a follow up. Yeah. And even if there wasn't anything mentioned, what I'm saying is it set off my dar. It's not saying yeah. me saying that there must have been something there. It just feels like something no, that, that makes would have you know sense. like unlocked one of my experiences. But carry on. Sure. Sure. Yeah, no, I... I you say for, what really irks me. For me, I think the thing that really irks me, and when I instantly went, oh, he's not the drama, was when the family, when the fiancé's family said, his family's wealthy, so therefore he continues to pay for their meals. Because that is just so entitled, mm-hmm. and that's just like, your family member's partner is not there to pay your food bill. Yeah. Like, that's not... That... For me, it was being called ungrateful, because I'm like, wow, pot kettle black, babe, is yeah. when you victimise, like, when you're, like, suggesting something, and it's, like, this deflection. Mm. I think they're saying that because they're like, oh, we know we're being ungrateful. I don't like, I don't think they consciously know it, but subconsciously, their brains are like, we're being ungrateful, so we're going to call you ungrateful. Yeah, it's, it happens a lot, doesn't it? It's and immature, like... and it's stupid. Immature. <laughs> I think, yeah. Mm. Should we see what other people have to say? Should we see if OP said anything? Ooh, one commenter said, your fiancé knew her family only left a $1 tip on a $240 meal, and she didn't put in the tip herself. Think carefully, OP. That's a bit odd. <laughs> but OP made it clear that his fiancé has not felt like she's able to speak against her family on this matter. No, I think what this commenter so... is saying is that why didn't OP's fiancé on the sly give the tip? Oh, but maybe Opie's family didn't know. But maybe maybe you Opie's don't know this fiance situation. went with you. It's yeah. It sounds OP. like that. That's a big yeah, because Opie make. didn't find out that it was a dollar tip until after. Yeah, although From maybe the cousin, there the could have been an assumption that she knew that's what they would do because that's what they always do. But it feels like a weird thing to say. It to is a bit of a weird. That's not that didn't even cross my mind. Right, assess your relationship, OP. Think because... carefully. <laughs> Not the drama. One dollar. Yeah, I wouldn't be going out to eat with them again. And OP said, I was embarrassed, was embarrassed for them. them. Yeah. Mm, I can understand. It is awkward. It's like if you go somewhere and like someone was like, I'm going to nick a fork. And then they start, <laughs> and you're like, don't steal a fork. It's, it's not just for them as well. That's what I'm saying. I think that extra complexity layer of it being your uncle's restaurant means that you're also going yeah, to be embarrassed you'll for be yourself. You'll be tough, but you'll also be painted with the same brush exactly. by the staff. Um, and by people who will trace it back to you. It, yeah. like, at least if it was a restaurant that you'd never gone to again, you could be like, oh my gosh, so embarrassing. I would never do that. At least people don't think of me in that way. Not yeah. that you would think that, but you know. I have a question. How long have they been together, the fiancés? Mm. Because... He's saying we go out for bi-weekly meals with her family. That's a lot of meals. But like, <laughs> so, and he's only just noticed now, or he's only just started paying. Mm. Is this like a new, maybe it's always like a, when I pay you tip, and it's only just on this occasion, maybe because it's a family run restaurant, that a cousin was like, you know, they only left a dollar. Maybe, or maybe it just came up in conversation. Yeah. And they were like, sorry, what, a dollar? And they were like, yeah, our family only tips a dollar. Because it's like, what? <laughs> if I were OP, I'd be thinking back on all the many meals and being like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Ooh. Ooh. Info. It's so interesting. One second. How, someone's asked, how long has family lived in the States? Do they understand what they're doing when they leave a dollar? Uh-huh. If not, not the drama. Great point. Yeah. A dollar is embarrassing, maybe even ruder than just not tipping. I wouldn't want to ever be seen at the same table <laughs> at that party. And OP said, her family's white American. Ah. Even their great grandparents are born in America. So they know the tipping culture in the state. And also maybe... This has confirmed to me... They are... That Almost likely from of different cultures, yeah. and this has taken a different vibe to me. This has definitely got my POC dar pinging. Yeah, you too. I don't know the sense of entitlement. I don't feels think greater. I have a POC dar. That is That's, totally yeah. fair for anyone listening. <laughs> totally fair, white husband. Yeah, yes. Totally <laughs> <fair>. <laughs> Ooh, there's an update. OP says I didn't break up with her, but her family's furious that I sent a message that someone in the forum had suggested about how to bring it up. Oh. They are refusing to talk to me. Oh dear, <gasps> that's bad. That's escalated. 
he continues, they've called my fiance multiple times saying things like, is this how Koreans do their business? <gasps> oh, they're racist. I told yeah. you, I told you. And <gasps> suggesting she should break up with me along with other offensive and more racist remarks. I you died, knew it. I felt it. I felt it in my bones. You knew it. Do you know that yeah. feeling that you get when, I mean, I don't know if anybody non-LGBT will relate, but when you're like, oh, I'm so certain that like, I just... am so certain that LGBT, and then they say something like reference a girlfriend, and you're like, <laughs> Were you like, I'm so certain that some like undercurrent of racism going on? I was feeling on. some get out vibes. I was absolutely okay. feeling yeah. the, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're t- totally not the drama. You're Mm-mm. the biggest not the drama yeah, right now. Absolutely not the drama. Just like entitled white Americans. Absolutely. And you know what I'm yeah. feeling kind of grateful for that you haven't let that get in the way of your relationship i've seen far too many times racist undertones culturally Mm. insensitive undertones bigotry and discrimination affect and pull apart two couples but i'm really glad that the outcome here is that no we're going to be together and family you are the bad ones this is why you got a bad vibe from the whole ungrateful comment because they think it's a privilege for someone who's not white to oh spend time with them. Oh my god, that like that privilege. Of, <laughs> oh god, wow, yeah. It's it's like when you watch Shrek again and you realise actually it's just full of innuendos. Yeah. <laughs> if we're what a great comparison. To like read over that again, yeah. we would see that actually this is like super problematic. Wow. wow. Cool. <laughs> Moving on. In the bin, racist family. In, in the bin. The bin. <laughs> okay. Cheapskate racist family. <laughs> You tell him. You tell my husband. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Final one for today is a submission. Oh, uh, fellow Juicy Peach. Come yeah. On. Share with us your drama. Okay. Would I be the drama for asking to see my friend less? Asks Noah. Okay. I, 25-year-old, and my friend Michaela, 25-year-old, mm-hmm. have been video calling once a week, says Noah, since we graduated college in 2020, to keep in touch first because of lockdown, and then because she lived seven hours away. Seven hours is very far. I, I'm assuming that Noah's in the States, because seven hours, I don't know, like, it just... like I, I, Seven hours here would be, like, one tip of the country to almost the other. Right, like, it's unusual. Whenever yeah. I see things like that, I'm like, whoa, that's far. Yeah. And then I'm like, actually, in the States... That's not far. <laughs> yeah. It's quite common. Um, anyway, recently, says Noah, she and I haven't really had much news to talk about most weeks. And so we usually end up talking about work or family, which is fine, mm-hmm. except that she is very excited about her new nieces and nephews and baby cousins. Oh, okay. No. Is Michaela one of the people that's like, babies? <laughs> All the time, the babies. And Noah's like, mm, yeah, okay. I don't know her family basically at all. Michaela and I are friends from college and I've met her parents, but not the family members that have the babies. Personally, I don't really like babies, but I'm not sure how to change the subject gracefully, especially when I don't have a new topic of conversation. It can be really boring though. It can. Talking about babies of people that you do not know, especially when you have no interest in babies. Or even of their babies, because... Or even your babies, because like, poor Noah, like they're probably like oh my god, this is the millionth photo that I am seeing. How do I get it to stop? (laughs) Donuts are wonderful. You don't need a hundred of them. Baby photos are lovely. Don't need a hundred of them. You know? Noah says, I'd really like to ask Michaela if we could make our calls less frequent, but she's also mentioned in the past that she's had difficult friend breakups, and I don't want to think that I'm pushing her away. At the same time, it feels like our friendship is going downhill because we ended up talking about the same two or three things every week, and I don't look forward to our talks as much as when we started. So what do you think, Jamie? Mm. Are they the drama? I'd say... For asking to call less often. Not the drama. I'm going to agree with you. Not because the drama. you... Friendships are supposed to bring us joy mm. and connection, and if you are not joyful or feeling connected to your friend... You are under no obligation to carry on that friendship or carry it on in the same way that it's been going. I totally agree. The friendship was formed and it was very different in the beginning. It's evolved into something that OP does not enjoy. And that's totally fair. They don't have to sit through the millionth talk about the same baby. I find it really funny that people like get so surprised and like stressed out over the fact that they can hear that friend breakups happen, I Mm. would expect friend breakups to be incredibly common. Because I've always said this, we grow. We always grow as people. Mm. And it's really rare to grow in the same direction with someone. 
it's like it really annoys me when people are like oh you've been together so long what's your secret you've done such a good job like no <laughs> it's luck like yeah. d- don't be on some high and mighty horse because you and your partner happen to be like together for a really long time you just happen by chance to have grown in the same direction but friends relationships whoever often People do not go in the same directions. Yeah. And why should we expect, like, seven, ten, however many years down the line to still be the same people and therefore have the same compatibilities yeah. as we used to? I do think relationships take work as well. I think, you I know, agree. we could have all have the potential... We could have the potential to grow in the same direction as somebody and not see that potential because no effort's been put in. Totally agree. But, yes, I do think there is an element of luck as well, like you said. And I think there's no... There's no upset... There's no drama, there's no fault in admitting we're not growing in the same direction. We've grown out this friendship. We're That's not okay. vibing. We're different kinds of people now. Like, we have different priorities. Noah's got the ick. Noah's got the ick. The friendship ick. And that is okay. Totally fine, Noah. Yeah. You do you, babe. I think you're not the drama at all. There's a way to do it that would be yes. drama. Yes, I do agree with that. There is a way to do it very nicely. Um, and maybe it doesn't need to be like a hey let's not talk so often because actually i'm finding our conversations really boring <laughs> lol you know maybe it can just be like a hey michaela i'm super busy um and then you know like let's call when we can and then that's yeah. not very often <laughs> also people's past experiences with difficult friend breakups is not your responsibility to You're cater right. to if you need to break up the friendship as long as you do it in a nice respectful way it's not your job to look after somebody based on their past experience of friend breakups. Absolutely. You do not feel glued to a friendship just because other people have fallen out with this person. Absolutely. You need to do what's right for you. Though I will say, it does kind of sound to me, because you said, you know, like, uh, hang on. But I will say, I don't think a breakup is necessary. Just more no, distance. No. And I know you've said, I don't want her to think that I'm pushing her away. But I think with the greatest amount of respect to noah you, you are kind of are yeah and that's okay <laughs> it's okay it doesn't make you a bad person you can tell that noah really doesn't isn't a bad person yeah. and doesn't want to be a bad person and i think that means that they will go about this very respectfully yeah and you just like you need to do what's right for you if you are not getting joy out of those phone calls and you're not looking forward to them you don't need to do them we don't owe companionship to anybody yeah it's always a choice and if it's not working for you babe you can change it yeah yeah not the drama respectfully yeah. but not the drama i would agree that's my bad too oh cute Yay. this has been a wholesome episode has it do you not think so i don't know i don't i i'm just in a i don't know why i'm on cloud nine i'm in a happy place it's because i'm sitting next to you <laughs> <laughs> that was the dorkiest <laughs> laugh. Have you gone red? Are you blushing, Shaba? No, I don't blush. I'm brown. You can blush a little bit. Only when I'm like really, really embarrassed. Why, why should I be embarrassed? What have I got to be embarrassed about? I'm amazing. Because you love me. It's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, loves. Yes, thank you very much for listening. If you are listening to this on a podcast platform, think about giving us a little rating. We'd really appreciate it. Absolutely. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, it would mean a huge deal if you wouldn't mind subscribing. Giving it a little like. Giving it a little like. Commenting what you think. Get your little juicy butts downstairs in the comments, fellow peaches. Let's carry on the conversation in a kind way. Yes, for sure. And you can also go follow us on Instagram over at 1-800-DRAMA-POD. And you can send us submissions and little drama incidences of your own. Like the gorgeous Noah did. Yes, at sharbrandjamie.com and then on the podcast page. Yes. Thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next time with another episode. Be kind. Much love. And have a great day. Bye. Bye.